Are you ready to live out loud with God? That's right, a good LOL. Then tune in to this season's LOL, where we will be transparent and provide guidance. Are you in need of healing and light? Love or a good word? Realness and confidence, coupled with a good laugh. From a good God. Then tune in to this season's LOL, where we will live out loud with God. Let's live and laugh together. What's up, y'all? Welcome to um, Living Out Loud with God. I am Tiara, and I'm here with... Hey, y'all. It's Rodney. Michaela Shepard. Hey. Yo. Listen, we back, and we back together. You know, last time, Michaela gracefully um, took the show for us, because we was busy in May, you know, yeah. me and Rodney, yeah, we busy. teachers, and... And May was like crunch time. Um, but McCaitlin went ahead and took it over. And make sure you go check out her show. Check your check your environment, baby. It's never too late. Don't forget that. Um, that today weird. we are talking about rediscovering yourself and rediscovering yourself in Christ. And before we talk about that, we got an important question. And I'm going to start off with McCaitlin. What made you even lose yourself to begin with before we get to the rediscovery? We had to get lost to get rediscovered. So, yes. Had to be lost to be found. True. So, this was kind of like our homework. So, I was thinking on it just a little. <laughs> what, 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 what made me become lost or what, you know, what led me to lose myself? It was literally... When I thought about the question, the first thing that came to mind was people pleasing. Mm. So I, former me, because I'm not her anymore. It ain't. <laughs> but I really lost myself trying to live up to everyone else's expectation of me. That's literally, I can't say it enough, people pleasing, like overdoing it, overcompensating. I literally remember the moment I had like that aha moment of like, everybody won't like you. Mm -hmm. This is way before father confidence. And I was like, wow, everybody won't, I'm a likable person. I feel like I'm a likable person. And I'm just like, everybody will not like me. And from there, from people pleasing and realizing how I, I'm chasing the wrong things, chasing after the wrong people. I mean, people literally showing me themselves to my face mm -hmm. and I, I was not taking my Angelou advice. I was not believing them. She said, when people show you who they are, believe, believe them. Believe them. <laughs> I was not believing them. And they were showing me who they were right to my face. But I was so <clears throat> lost in the fact of I want to be liked. I want to be liked. I want to be liked. That that was ultimately my demise. And it was from there that, boom, confidence. And from there, you can't tell me nothing. I do not people please. I have boundaries. Mm. Um, you will lose access to me if you overstep my boundaries or don't respect my boundaries. I, it, the list goes on. Like, I, I, I come first. Then it's every, I mean, the word says that, too. You say you love, <laughs> love your people, you love your neighbors, how you love, love yourself. Love yourself. <laughs> So we forget yeah. that self part. I have forgot that self part. I was too busy loving everybody else. I was so consumed with, let me love everybody. Let me do this for everybody else. Mm -hmm. But I had to scale back. God brought me back. And from then, confidence. And I ain't never going back. People I'll be telling you, I, when I feel myself about to go back, I, I remember where I used to be, mm -hmm. how it used to make me feel, the anxiety used to rise up with certain mm -hmm. people. They no longer have access to me. Yeah, I watch you. I love you still, but I love you. I do. No, no access, and so yeah, that was that was the bulk of where I lost myself at, and yeah, I was around like twenty. So we had to put an age on around like twenty two, twenty four, between twenty two and twenty four, twenty five. That age, that's how old you were. Yeah, and and actually, that now that you said that, before I even read this scripture, I'm gonna read Galatians um, one ten, and it says, 
Four, am I now seeking the favor of people or of God? Or am, or am I striving to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would, I would not, not be. be a bond servant of Christ. And I said, oh, I'm a server of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to read that verse a lot. I said, now, it's either or. What you going to do? You going to people please or you going to and the latter? I... It's in the book. It's in the book. <laughs> And I think um, a lot of people can relate to um, people pleasing. I when I did the healing class at, at Ebenezer, remember we had a few women that was just like, "I'm over, I'm just overdoing it," and because we want to save, we want to we want to save people, you know, like through love and kindness and just showing you. But I can't save everybody. I can't I can't do that. And um, thank you for your transparency. Now, Rodney. What what made you lose yourself? I mean, so I feel like McCaitlin and I already said everything that needs to be said. So I'm just piggyback off the cake. Um, you know, when we look at it, people pleasing, um, and it's like you said, a lot of people fall into that particular category when we talk about losing who we are. Um, you know, one thing that my eighth grade business ed teacher told me, God rest her soul, I love Miss Francis. Um, but she told me, she's like, you want to help everybody. Mm-hmm. And it brings you such joy <clears throat> being able to help people. Um, that's just something I've always been, that's, that's, that I've always done. I mean, elementary from a young child all the way up to, you know, when I was in middle school. Um, but one of the things that she taught me that really stuck with me to this day is that I can't help everybody Mm -hmm. as bad as I want to. This is just not something that I can do, you know? Um, And so I, you know, I went back and forth in life, just teetering on that, you know, it would be one minute I'm understanding that I can't help everybody. The next minute I'm trying to convince myself that I can, you know what I'm saying? Um, But what I really found was that I was compensating um, helping people, I was using that to really cope with what I was dealing with in my personal life. Right. And if I could see everybody else happy, then mm-hmm. I, you know, I tried to trick myself into thinking that if I seen everybody else happy, then I would be happy. Right. But in all actuality, you know, what I was doing was just pushing myself further into a state of depression, pushing right. myself further into really losing who I was and who Mm -hmm, I am. mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, take it back to what Kate said, we get so caught up in people pleasing that we don't even recognize us anymore. Yeah. And so recently, you know, I just, I had to sit back, I had to sit down and just really think about it. I'm like, I don't know who I am anymore. You know? uh, (laughs) That was honest. We had that honest conversation (laughs) on the trip. On our our healing trip. Yeah. It is just like, you know, we were at the beach and, we were just talking and I told Terry, I was like, I don't, you know, I don't know who I am anymore. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's just, it really hit me. Um, and what made me think about that was just this past, uh, this past school year, teacher appreciation with, you know, all my parents were like, we really want to honor you. You really want to get yourself. What do you like? Silence. A silence. I don't I know. Nothing to say because yeah. I, I didn't know what I liked. And so for me, that was scary. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't tell people about me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, just taking, setting aside the spiritual aspect of things. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I know I love God. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But how do you, you know, it's just you as a person. What do you like? What do you love? I had nothing to tell them. And we know you like and love stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Them. So, you know, I just... um. I'm still working on finding finding out or rediscovering me. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where I'm at. And I think that, honestly, that's why God was like, no, you can't work this summer. Like, yeah. You really, you know, I tried, I tried, I tried, you know. I'm like, work. baby, you're not about to work <laughs> no <laughs> job. Like, like take your break. All that. Like, you know, that's, yeah. That's all I do. I just work, work, work. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I think God, like, really forced me to sit down and something just like, no, you really need to figure out who you are. How can you serve the people? How can you even serve me if you don't even know who 
you are. So true, 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 true. Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. Um, so for you two, it, people pleasing normally comes from a lack of something that we are missing in our life. So confidence, loneliness. So if I'm here, 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 you know, I think I'm good. Yeah. Until somebody asks me. Or till I sit down, I really think like I really don't know myself, and this is a fleshly battle. We didn't, we not, we talking about rediscovering yourself before you even rediscover Christ, <laughs> because yes. I know you literally so. you'll keep going, 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 going until you end up sick, until you end up in a bad relationship, because you saw the red flags, you you know you saw things, and you was just yeah. like, I really shouldn't do that. Are this really not me? Like I'm sitting here and I'm not even happy. Yeah. It, I, you know what? It's not making me happy to see you happy because I don't want to sit in the club with y'all, okay? Because that made you happy. This ain't it. This ain't it. I don't want to sit in the club with y'all. I gotta go. But um, so you know, I I thank y'all for sharing that and for all the people that's out here, people pleasing. I really want to encourage you to think about why are you doing it? What happened in your life that makes you feel like you have to overcompensate with pleasing other people instead of making yourself happy? You are deserve, like you deserve happiness. You are worthy of that. No matter what you have done, you are worthy of that. And then me, I'm going to last. Mine's is a little different. Um, I'm not really like a people pleaser, but um. I did lose myself when I was diagnosed with lupus, and they know that. Like, I thought I was going to die. Last year, I was diagnosed with lupus lupus in November. And I was like, I have nothing to live for. I started looking around at my life, and I'm like, I didn't accomplish anything. I'm on a time. I'm on a clock right now. Like, all I could think about was healing and just going into this isolation. And it was a really, really bad time for me. And they was here by my side, you know, praying for me. But I really lost myself because I just felt like I had nothing to live for. And if I started now, who's going to finish it? Because I didn't think I was going to be here. But I'm not going to cry. It's okay you too. Last you week here. I went to the doctor and they didn't even find no lupus. Exactly. And so I was just like... You know, as I was rediscovering myself, I said, you know what? I'm going to live and not die. And I had to tell myself that all the time because some days I would get sick and, and, and I, and Adam would be crying or worried about me and he'll be like, please don't die. Like he literally told me that like three weeks ago before we got the news. And I was like, I'm not going to die. Like I'm going to live. But I just was like losing myself because I was just like, who gonna finish what I started? Yeah. Nobody. So I'm like, I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. I just need to go to work and build up Adam and Bella. Like that's my only goal, so that they can live without me. And so yeah, like that's how I lost myself. I lost myself in sickness, and I and a lot of people do. A lot of people that get diagnosed with cancer, lupus, um, name some more diseases, diabetes, high blood pressure. You name it. When you get sick, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to heal yourself, especially if you listen to the doctor, because the doctor told me you can never get rid of lupus for letter A. And even when they said they couldn't find it on Thursday, they told him be careful because it can come back. But if it ain't there, it ain't there. And they was a doctor. <laughs> like, like, it is not there. Jesus. Jesus. Heavy on the, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm just like, uh, if you are sick, I'm encouraging you to get up look around, enjoy, start it. Yeah. Don't even worry about who's going to finish it. Because that was my thing. You know, it's just me. It's me, Adam, and Bella. I have a family, yes. But I'm the generational curse breaker in my family. So what I'm doing, nobody's doing it. What I'm doing is is from God. What I'm doing is to set my generation, our lineage, the Bracey family, the Cunninghams, the Robinsons on a different path. So I'm not even going to worry. I don't even even worry about this even started. And guess what? Somebody going to pick it up in the name of Jesus because we've been talking about generation, generation, generation. Yeah, Start it, do it, and guess what? In me doing this work, I, I healed. It made, me, it made me become stronger because I was just like, I, I am pretty powerful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got it together. So, um, yeah, mine's is a little different. Um, 
But losing yourself is a battle between flesh and spirit. And I'm going to read Romans 8, 5 through 7. Come on, Rodney, with a word, because he helped. He, he got these <laughs> scriptures for us. For those who are in accord with the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are in accord with the spirit, the things of the spirit, free the mind set on the flesh is death. For the mind set on the de- on the for the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Because the mindset on the flesh is hostile towards God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. People think flesh is like just sexual, and it ain't. Yeah, it <laughs> like, it ain't. tell us more about what the flesh can do. I mean, you know, when we look at it, <clears throat> I mean. The flesh is anything that is not a part of the spirit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So we look at it, we have our fleshly body, and then we have our spiritual man that's on the inside of us. And, I mean, you know, we've all heard whichever one you feed the most, that's which one is going to rise. You know what I'm saying? So it's not just a, a, a sexual a sexual thing. You know, it can be depression, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It can be <clears throat> sickness, you yes. know, it can be not having the confidence. Yeah. You know, it's anything that will take yeah. you out of the mindset of Christ. Point blank period. Yeah. Anything that will that will try to set you asunder from who God told you who who you are, what God told you you can do, what God has actually placed on the inside of you, you know what I'm saying? That is the flesh. Speaking on, you know, just a sickness, um, you know, for a couple of years now, I've just been dealing with gastro issues, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Say this girl, say this acid reflux. And it's just like, whatever they said it was, it just, it didn't make a difference. And it's just like <clears> Sundays, <throat> you know, my body would get attacked. I'm like, I gotta sing. You know, everybody know where I can sing on Sundays. You know what I'm saying? But I learned that in my pressing, um, God still honored that. And it's mm-hmm. just as soon as I hit the sanctuary, it was like my spirit was lifted. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because God was just like, you pressed. But there have been so many times where my flesh, you know, tried to rise up. It's just like, stay home, lay yeah. in bed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was, the, that was the thing that was trying to set me asunder from what God placed on the inside of me. You know what I'm saying? But when you feed your spirit, man, and when you realize and understand who you are in Christ, yeah. you know that you have something to accomplish yes. and you're going to do anything you can to get there. Yes. <clears throat> anything. Um, That's good. That is good. So, McKaylin, what does your role to rediscovery look like? I like what you said when you said God honors your press. Because that's, I think I'm, I'm still on the road to rediscovery. Yeah. It don't stop. It don't stop. And um, God honors my press literally when I don't feel like it. It's, it's really, I don't care how I feel. I'm going to press. Yeah. You know, I, my path, and that's literally how I rediscover myself in Christ. I literally got in the selfish season. Mm-hmm. I said, I don't care what nobody say, feel, what they think. It's about me and God. And this was college. And so I was tunnel vision in church for Bible study, yeah. choir rehearsal, yeah. Yeah. praise team. <laughs> it, I literally went back to that in college because, mind you, yeah. all this is around me still in college. And I was still in my flesh, to be honest. But I said, for this healing, for whatever, I, I'm still going to press. And God honors my press. And I still press today. Yeah. I'm going to press. It, Relationship. <laughs> And honestly saying, yes, rediscovering yourself in Christ is saying yes, yes to it. God mm-hmm. and literally overcompensating in a church with people yes. because I had to do the same thing when I was rediscovering myself years ago when I rededicated my life to God. I was at church for everything mm-hmm. until I build up my spirit enough mm-hmm. to read the word on my own, yes. to pray on my own. You know what I'm saying? And I thank God. Uh, the church family is great for that. Uh, church is a good place, although it has this negative thing around it. It is a great place to go to to rebuild yourself, and that is honestly how I re- rebuilt myself is that. And then I took that with me everywhere. Um, and then the last question is, before we go, will you always have to rediscover yourself in Christ? Like Kate said, um, just very quickly, uh, rediscovery doesn't stop. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, 
you get to a place, you know, where we are now, we want to get to a certain place. But once we reach that certain that place, guess what? We want to go higher. Yeah. So rediscovering yourself right never right stops. Right. But yes. the important thing is that you keep God first in everything. Yes. Don't lose God. No matter what you lose, don't lose God. Don't I'm like lose God. I, I'm thinking of something a friend <clears throat> said in our accountability group. She said, if God goes to prepare the place, he gotta go before you. Go before yeah. You. So, and we talk, I'm pretty sure we done said that this season, like he got to go before you to prepare the place. So as long as I'm following his lead, that's, yeah. And then always remain teachable. It don't stop. Be teachable. The pastor said yesterday, he is a teacher of faith and a student of faith. And you, when you in this rediscovery, you have to be faithful. And it is so hard. Like, trust, like we get it. We really do. That's why we're telling you, like telling y'all today, like rediscover yourself and then rediscover yourself in Christ. Like, what is it that you really need to go to another level spiritually, physically, emotionally, so that you can obtain this peace always. Like we been, we ain't been in peace this month of June. You feel me? This week we said we gonna have peace, but we had to like rediscover ourselves in Christ, and we had to rediscover ourselves because you're not gonna play with my peace. You and just not had to get gangsta. Literally, to get for real, like, it's like <laughs> it's a hill and valley. It's like it's that always hills and valleys. That's yeah. Tell you something. Mm. Them valleys gotta turn into another hill because when I come up. <laughs> I'm going to stop there. I ain't going to. No. <laughs> listen. <laughs> going to keep on going. When I come we up, just I'm, know. I'm like, listen. Well, we thank y'all so much for joining us today. Clap it up for good. rediscovering yourself and rediscovering yourself in Christ. The two scriptures that we talked about today was Galatians 1 and 10. You can do like a little private Bible study and Romans 8, 5 through 7. Keep that spirit tight. Let that flesh die every day. And we love y'all. Have a good one. Are you ready to live out loud with God? That's right. A good LOL. Then tune in to this season's LOL, where we will be transparent and provide guidance. Are you in need of healing and light? Love or a good word? Realness and confidence, coupled with a good laugh. From a good God. Then tune in to this season's LOL, where we will live out loud with God. Let's live and laugh.